everyone, I'm Miss Murray and welcome to Wondering Wednesday. Today's segment is going to be, so you want to be a dot dot dot, where we interview someone that is in a really interesting career. So when people ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? You might have some ideas because of some cool people that we've talked to right here. So today we're going to be talking to Josh, who is a plumber. So let's get on to the interview. Hey everybody, welcome to Wondering Wednesday. I'm here with Josh, who's going to talk to us a little bit about what it's like to be a plumber. Hi Josh, thank you for being here today. Good, thank you for having me. Really excited. Good, good, good. So you ready for some questions? I'm ready. Okay, so what inspired you to become a plumber or to work in that sort of field? Well, this time last year, I actually got laid off from my job. And so I was at church and one of the members, one of the uh, one of my friends came up and was like, what do you like to do? And I'm like, I like working with my hands and helping people. And so I started putting applications out for entry level trade jobs and I got hired doing HVAC helper and I did HVAC helper and plumbing helper. And then I just transitioned to plumbing because I like that a lot more. So I've been doing that now for a while, almost a year now. And I've loved it. It's lots of fun. <laughs> Keeps me busy that's, that's, now. It's always good finding something that, that that's fun. And what does yeah. HVAC stand for, for those of us that don't know? HVAC is heating, uh, AC and cooling. Uh, it's for the whole ventilations and refrigeration systems. Okay, there you go. Now you know. Okay, so what's your favorite part about this job? You said you liked helping people. But what's what? What made yeah. you go to plumbing instead of sticking with HVAC? Uh, HVAC is a lot more science involved, knowing the refrigerant levels and the pressures and everything. Uh, whereas with the plumbing, it's quite simple. You just use gravity. Uh, uh, so there's 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 a saying that I can't say here <laughs> that we plumbers would say, uh, but uh, it's it's really I like how dual water heaters. They're simple and easy to do. You just cut them out, cut the new ones in. They're heavy though. Um, uh, but really, just kind of like okay, so there's a problem here. What's the problem? Oh, you're not getting any water. Or there's the clog. Where's the clog? Well, it's in the pipe somewhere. So you just got to figure out where it is. So it's quite easy to do, but yet it's hard. It's hard work to do. And that's what I like. I like a little bit of the challenge there. Okay. So what's your least favorite part? I hate snaking things. We have a snake. It's a, essentially it's a big coil, about a quarter inch, three quarters of an inch thick. And we have to stick it down uh, the drains or a clean out or we have to take the toilet off and the little flange there in the little hole where everything goes down to it uh, just to clear the drains and that's just so gross like I have to clean the cables after every time I use them because it's just like ugh. I wear gloves and all the safety stuff but still it's just that smell smell and it just lingers on those cables that's that's my least favorite right? Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Like that's probably like the first thing everybody thinks of, uh, thinks of when they think of plumbers is is sewage and dealing with toilets. Yeah, and... that's, uh, that's that's the the least favorite. I'll deal with water and gas, but sewage, like. Uh... <laughs> I don't think anybody would want to deal with that. <laughs> so. That's the, that's the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what kind of training or degrees would somebody need to do this job? That's a very good question. Um, you can go to trade schools, go to NOVA, they offer the certifications, or you can just go and apply to like bigger companies like Michael and Sons or ARS or Crop Mag. Uh, and, but they do want you to have some sort of trade stuff so if you you know your high school or anything offers that definitely take up on that i didn't so it took me a while to get my foot in the door uh but once i did get my foot in the door it's i've been just going up the chain um uh, and like right now i think 2021 comes around they're looking at putting a bunch of us into school so like twice a night the company will pay us our salary plus the schooling fees 
and everything for us to go get certifications and get our work our way up to our masters and so and it's like so you start out as like a former helper or an apprentice and then once you pass that then you become a journeyman and it takes about two years for the apprenticeship to go in and then you've got six years of a print of journeymanship and then another two years uh, until you get your master's. So it's about 10 years to get your master's certifications. We will plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. So if you want to go into any of those three big trades there, uh, that, that's how it goes. So plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. Um, um, you can either go in, uh, a bunch of the guys that I work with have been doing this for seven, eight years, and they don't have any certifications. They just have that experience, work experience. Uh, but our boss is like, I want you guys to get those classes and everything, because once you get those classes and you get those certifications, you can ask for more money. Not and that's important. And so that's ultimately the goal is to make money. And so they're trying to invest in you so then you can invest in, the, in what you know can help make the company more. Because that's what makes the world go around. <laughs> right, and this is definitely a job that is needed in, yeah. you know, in in the world. And and I didn't know that much. You know, like I know I heard about trade school and and getting certifications, but but that's I mean that's just like becoming a teacher or a doctor or a lawyer. All the schooling that you have to do just to to get up to that to that level. So that that's pretty awesome. So yeah, because like, like electrical, you got to know a lot of the science to know. The, ampage voltage uh especially the codes because here in virginia we're a commonwealth which is different than a state so every uh, every county and every city has their own different regulations like Fauquier county and stafford county you can only use cpvc for certain things versus the pvc pipe which is the rest of the counties you got you know and every other county has their own different silly codes and regulations like uh a, a TMP valve, a te uh, temperature and pressure valve, has a little stem pipe and it has to be a certain amount of inches above the drain pan. Each county has a slightly different, usually it's one inch, sometimes it's six inches above the pan. And so, so it's those subtleties and stuff you gotta, you gotta know too. And so, it's not just going in there, tightening things up. You actually have to make things look nice because we take this very seriously. We're very professional about it. We're not just some um, Joe Smo who thinks, oh, yeah, I can do this. You get in there and you're like, no, this is hard work. <laughs> but it's rewarding work, too, especially if some of you have been an emergency call. Like like my downstairs neighbor, she would, her water heater started leaking. And so she's like, do you know anything about plumbing? And I'm like, that's what I do for a living. <laughs> Let me take a look. And so I told her what the problem was and fixed the problem for her. And so I felt kind of like, I did a good thing today. <laughs> and, and just being on the other end of that and having somebody come in and fix when you're like freaking out. Like I, I, I'm remembering, we, we have the best maintenance guy We're here where I live. And if we ever move, he's going to be the one I'm going to miss the most. He um, like he came in the middle of almost it wasn't quite the middle of the night, but it was like almost 11 midnight. Like it was late and um, and our bathtub started going crazy. Like the faucet fell off and the water was just gushing oh. out and I was freaking out and running around and I was like, oh, my God, there's th it's not going down the drain. Da, 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 da. He like came out, fixed it. And it was like one of the most relieving things. He just looks at me and he goes, it's OK. Why are you stressing out? I got this. It's just like yeah. so calm and like it's like this is like it's not something like new he's like oh i've seen this before i can fix this and that's just the coolest thing ever so. yeah that's experience too you know like <clears throat> you know something's not working you start panicking uh but you know just keep coming think <laughs> with yeah. any situation yeah you know? when you when you have all this knowledge that you're learning and a love for this job, but you can come in and be calm in this situation where you have, you know, Miss Mary crazy running around with her hands flailing because her bathroom's flooding. But, you know, it's it's, it's just, it's, that's such a cool way to be. Yeah. Okay, so this is my favorite question that I always ask. Do you have any advice or what advice do you have for anybody that inspires to go into 
any of the things you've talked about, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, anything, what advice do you have? Um, <clears throat> if you want to do it, start young because a lot of the old guys are retiring and not a lot of people know about this. And so start young, uh, go to career counselors and ask them, where do I start? Uh, talk to the shop teacher. If there is a shop teacher or a tech ed teacher or something. Uh, talk to the automotive teacher at the school. When I was in high school, we had an automotive class. That was the only thing we had as far as schooling for me. Uh, but if you're something, if you want to get into trades, talk to someone who you know in trades. If any of your students want to know more, you know, they can message me. I can tell them what to do, uh, where to begin with. For me, I just started going on Indeed and getting that interview, getting that first kick in the step there. Uh, but prior to that, I had 10 years of customer service experience. And that's what a lot of some of these people don't have, is that be able to communicate to um, customers and everything. And so I've got 10 years of that. So that to me was my my little pinky toe getting into the door. Uh, and so, but uh, as far as, you know, getting into it, just go to figure out where the big companies are and drive to them and say, hey, you need someone to sweep up the shop? I'll sweep up the shop for eight hours a day. I'll clean up the shop you know, minimum wage, you know, whatever. And then just start from there. You know, what's the worst they can say? No. You know, uh, you know, get used to hearing no. Because a lot of places want masters, but a lot of places also are gonna have to realize, oh, the masters are going away. We need some of the newer guys so we can make masters. And so I think they're slowly realizing because I work with a bunch of new guys as well that have been doing this for a couple of years but aren't masters. And they all tell the same thing. They just, you know, find out one company, find out one guy that will be like, okay, I believe in you. And have a good work ethic too. Uh, the one thing my boss really hates is, you know, when you complain and you piss and moan, but you don't have any solutions. Um, you, you tell you, someone tells you to do a job, you do it. You don't, you know, if you have a question about what you need to do, ask that. They don't tell, I'll, I'll tell them, you know, oh, I don't want to do that. That doesn't sound like fun or boring. Sometimes the boring jobs are a way of teaching you, you know, the different parts, you know, organizing all the parts. You know, if I ask someone, oh, give me a 90 straight. You guys say, I don't know what a 90 straight looks like. Then I have to go and get that. And it takes time for me doing the job. Whereas, oh, if you spend time in the shop, you can know what a 90 straight looks like. And so it's, you know, stuff like that, you know, say, you know, I'll take out the trash, I'll take out the trash, you know, stuff like that does get you noticed in bus. And so that's what, you know, majority of the time the new guy has to do anyways. <laughs> you got to pay your dues somehow. And one of the interesting things that I just noticed as you were talking was, <clears throat> about, <clears throat> excuse me, if I can talk today. <clears throat> there we go is um <clears throat> okay now i'm good is the um whole idea of work ethic and like how do the things you described within that situ like within working for for somebody or at least trying to get um sort of seen by the bosses so people will you know notice like oh this person's putting in all that effort are things that the kids can start practicing the kids can start practicing now in the classroom because you got to have a good work ethic to get those good grades. And if you want to learn how to do something, you got to ask questions. Like these are all things I know I tell my sixth graders all the time. It's like, you know, work hard, um, ask questions and try your very best and people will notice all the hard work you're putting in. And people don't realize that those things that we teach you in middle school can reflect into a workplace later on. And I think that's really oh, yeah. important. We're constantly so, asking questions. We have weekly meetings and boss always asks us to come up with questions to ask uh, whenever I'm with someone and we're doing something like, like I was helping one guy yesterday with uh, a gas leak search and I've never done one. So I was constantly asking him questions and everything uh, about gas leak and he showed me how to do it and he told me why we do this. Uh, and then another guy I was with, we were doing, um, 
you know, just switching out a water heater. But every time I'm with him, I'm learning something new about water heaters, different water heaters and everything. Oh, and so it's, it's always ask questions. There's no such thing as a dumb question. The only dumb question is the one not asked. I like that. That, 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 that's a good, that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. Um, because it is so, 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 so true. Okay. Yeah. So we come to what I, well, I think we already had a lot of fun, but now we're going to come to the random <laughs> part of our, of our interview here, our lightning round. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Like there's 10 total. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and you just answer with the first thing that pops into your head. Okay. Okay. okay so number one, if you could visit any place in the world, where would it be? New Zealand. If you could have any superpower, where what would it be? Super strength. Who's your favorite superhero? Batman. Favorite movie? That's a tough one. I'm gonna say the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Good answer. <laughs> favorite song? It varies. That's day to day, it's different. <laughs> Different day, different song. Uh, favorite cartoon character? See, I was debating about this one. What should I say? First thing that comes to my mind. Well, it's my, my daughter right now, so it's me. <laughs> that's a good one. That's a classic. Uh, favorite animal? That's another tough one. I don't really have a favorite one, but I love my little English bulldog. A good one. Favorite food? Probably a cheeseburger. Another classic. Favorite drink? Bud Light with lime. Okay, and your favorite emoji? My favorite emoji, I have an iPhone, so anytime I can use an emoji where it's a cartoon version of me, I, I use it. So whether it's the, most of the time if I'm talk to my wife it's usually uh the the heart eye emoji or it's the super laughing one with the tears coming out and so it's just funny seeing a really bearded big bearded guy cartoon <laughs> version with tears coming yeah I, I like bit bitmoji like that's basically all over my channel <laughs> OG. and yeah so i totally get that it's always fun using a cartoon version of yourself to annoy people oh yeah <laughs> or make them happy yeah. Okay, so that is all I have for you. Um, do you have any parting words before we say our goodbyes and let these? I wish I knew grades when I was your students' ages and got into it when I was out of high school because uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of rewarding work too. It's a lot of hard work, but at the end of the day, you feel accomplished. Um, and so if any of you guys want any you know, questions or advice or anything, uh, Miss Murray can reach out to me and I can, I can give you any type of advice. You can reach out to me because um, I think, you know, as the years go on, we'll be needing more and more people coming in for the trades, uh, especially if there's another pandemic. You know, we're essential workers. Um, we take this very serious, this work very seriously. We joke around, yes, but uh, we want to make sure that the job is done right and everything's done uh, safely as well. Uh, so, but yeah, we want to help out as many people as possible. And that's why we're doing it, is to help people uh, and to make money. But mostly for me, it's to help people and do the right thing. Because uh, I want to, you know, I did sales for 10 years. I lost my soul a little bit. I'm trying to keep my soul as much as possible <laughs> right now. And I want to give back as much as possible. And so if they're, you know, I want to help out with young people too, if they want, if they have questions. Because like I said, I didn't know about this. Um, and I, you know, I'm not the best student in the world. So all I want to do is work. And like all the other jobs are like, oh, you have to have, you know, 10 years of school. I don't have that money. <laughs> yeah, go, going to school is was, was is a tough part, and there's so many careers out there that say you need to have this amount of experience. But the fact, but you said a little bit earlier that you know your company and your boss is willing to invest in your schooling, 
So that's yeah. another great thing about the trades is that something that can come about is they'll be like, we like you, we think you have potential, we're gonna put the money down so you can actually get the schooling that you need. And that's a pretty yep. awesome thing. So yeah. So thank you so much for being here and for answering all of these crazy questions. Um, no and good luck with everything and thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thanks.